Hi guys. As you can see, I've taken those buses and dragged them across so you can see what's going on here. And I'll try and tell you what these are. This is the instruction input, which takes a program line by line and feeds into the CPU. This is clock input. This is where the clock will go. And you can just simulate simulate a clock by just dropping a torch, picking it up, dropping a torch, picking it up. This is the write memory bit. This is the jump bit. Jumping is important. A computer needs to be able to decide based on some condition that it doesn't want to do the next instruction. It wants to do something else instead. <coughs> Sorry to cough. This is the A register. The A register wears a lot of hats. It's not just a place to hold values like a lot of registers are. It also determines the address of memory that you are requesting from the memory bank. And based on what is in this register, the memory bank will give you back a different chunk of memory. This is also where you put the instruction you want to jump to. This is the uh, this is where memory will be hooked up. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry to cough again. There was this guy um, in some comments somewhere I can't remember where that complained and just went on and on about me coughing once in the last video. So I guess me coughing twice in this video is revenge for him complaining. Take that. Now I have emphysema. That'll show him. Uh, anyway, this is where memory will eventually go. Here you can simulate uh, memory, a memory bank returning you something by just dropping some torches. And this is the output of the CPU ready to be deposited in some register or memory or what have you. But this is just a good way to see what you're computing at the time. So, um, for the inaugural run of the CPU, I've come up with a little program for it to do. <coughs> three times, coughing three times. And I'll work my way through it. And it'll also help me explain how the instruction set works. So the instructions here are, ma are, basically, are mainly based off of this bit. This is the control bit rather the compute bit. If it's on, you're giving a specific instruction to the CPU. And the rest of these bits are used to say what instruction you're giving. If it's off, you are giving a value to the A register. So, we are giving the value 1 to the A register. There we go. Four times. Ah, ah, ah. I guess. Ah, ah, ah. So, we have that value in the A register. Let's turn this on to start computing. These two bits don't actually do anything, but if you're doing a compute mode instruction, they say leave them on. So, I'm leaving them on. Why not? This is for loading a value out of memory. We are not doing that. And these six bits are just the control bits from the first video. These control the ALU. This is for zeroing and inverting the D register. We want to zero it. This is for zeroing and inverting the A register. We want to do neither to it. This is for ending or adding those two inputs together we want to add and we want to not invert the output so we leave that alone these three bits are new they are the destination bits we can take what we just computed which is just what's in the A register and we can send it to one of three places or all three or any combination of them we can send it to the A register again the D register 
for memory. <coughs> Five times. I may be dying. So, uh, where was I? I coughed my train of thought right out of me. So this allows you to choose multiple destinations and send the value to any or all of them. And these are jump con uh, condition bits, which help you specify um, why you will jump or what will cause you to jump. And all of that is based on the output of the CPU, so what we have over here. This will jump if it's less, if the output is less than zero, this will jump if it's equal to zero, this will jump if it's greater than zero, right now it's one, it's greater than zero, so that should set the jump bit, and it does, turn it off, jump bit goes off, and it doesn't react to these two because one is not less than or equal to zero. So, we have it set up to just deposit, actually not yet, now we have it set up to just deposit the A value into the D register. So, we toggle the clock, and now it should be in the D register. The way you can know is you turn off zero the D register, you turn off the zero the D register bit, so now you're just adding A and D together. And you know it's working because now the output is two. Because we have one over here, we have one in the D register, way over there somewhere, the output is two. And so now let me talk to you about the program I'm running. The program I'm running is Fibonacci sequence. That's what we're outputting. We just did one, one, two. Now we're about to do three. So we just put what we just outputted over here. We continue to add. Now we have three. One, one, two, three. And we just move back and forth between the two registers to get the rest of the sequence. One, one, two, three, five. Eight. Now. There's eight. Got to see the miracle of ripple counting, too watch it count its way up to 8. Ripple adding rather. The next one should be 13, if I remember. There's 13. By the way, if you don't know binary, binary is easy. Each one of these dots is a number. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. It just doubles each time. And the way you figure out a binary number is you just take the the dots that are on and you add them together. So this is the ones place, the fours place, the eights place. Eight plus four is twelve, plus one is thirteen. Over here, the ones place and the fours place. Four plus one is five. Oh, by the way, this is flipped if you haven't noticed yet. Fibonacci with some very simple instructions. As for what's coming next, memory, obviously. 128 bytes to start with is my plan. ROM, obviously, so you can run, so you have store programs to run later. And eventually, maybe, in the far future, a screen and keyboard. So that's a prospectus for where we're going. In terms of videos, I really want to 
do a flyover video in an editor so I can easily move from place to place and kind of give you the grand tour in a quicker way than I could on foot. And also, the save is coming. In a few days, um, or, ev or really however long it takes me to be sure that there aren't any bugs left over, or I'm not going to put something out that's broken in some very subtle way that ends up breaking only in a very specific case that somehow everyone but me tries. So as soon as I'm sure that I have everything working properly, I'm going to release this because most of the fun here, and the reason I decided to build this in the first place, is that it's just awesome to be able to run around in the CPU at this scale, to be able to run around inside the CPU, something you never get to see the inside of really. And I hope you think that's awesome too, I hope you pick up the save file and don't just, you know, put a bunch of TNT in the middle and laugh as you blow it up, I hope you also, I hope you actually run around here and play with the inputs and outputs and learn a little bit about how these things work, or add on to the CPU and do some cool stuff with it. So that's coming out soon, and I really look forward to what you guys do with it, or I just look forward to you guys playing around with it at least. So, look for that very soon. And thanks for watching, and thanks for keeping up with me. I really appreciate the fact that people care about this sort of stuff. Or at least a little bit interested in it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.